All right. Hey, hey, guys. Thanks so much for joining us for our team Zoom. We've switched to Monday night this week because we have a very, very special guest. And I am so excited to hear from her. So um, without further ado, you guys, we have Ashley Mayfield, Ambassador Diamond. She is Ashley and Jason were number 25 money earners this year. And I am just so excited. So hi, Ashley. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm good. Hold on. I got to find you so I can put you on spotlight so uh, we can see your face and not mine. How about that? I'm here. Can you find me? <laughs> I'll talk so you guys can see me. Whoa, there's my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was leaning in the camera. And my face popped up on my screen. So that's fantastic. Hi, guys. How are you? We are so good. We're so excited to hear from you tonight. So uh, we have people on here who literally just signed up today. And we have people on here who have been here for seven years like myself, so I'm super excited. So if you could just give us all a quick intro, tell everybody who you are, where you're from, how long you've been in the business, why you got started. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for having me on, you guys. It's always an honor. Uh, I consider it always an honor, so thank you, Noel, just for people to um, even just trust me. This is like, it's a big deal when someone comes on and speaks to your team, right? So I appreciate that. I kind of realized, like, I don't know why I have this, like, prom hairdo thing going on, but I decided not to get ready for my day today. So normally I'm put together, but you guys are getting, like, a real raw Mayfield, okay? Um, so next month will be my fourth year anniversary, which is absolutely insane because I said that I would never do one of these things. Drop a one in the chat if you said you'd never do one of these things, okay? Ooh, Sammy, you're screen sharing. If you can stop. Sammy, Sammy's going to screen share for us and draw that one instead of just dropping it. I don't want to make that stop either. <laughs> Hit escape. It Ooh. should cancel out for you. Wait. Hmm. Hold on. It doesn't do anything. Well, hold on. Let me see if I can if you screen share. It might cancel it hers out. And then you can unscreen share. Screen share. Continue. There we go. Hold on. I'm going to share with you guys and then we're going to go back and then just cancel it. And then we're going to stop. Thank you. Perfect. Are we good? We're good. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Yes, we should be good now. Here we go. All right. So uh, like I said, next month is my four-year anniversary. I said I would never do anything like this. So four years ago, I was a full-time retail manager. Um, and honestly, uh, I was just felt like I was overworked, underpaid. I was working 50 to 60 hours a week, only making 40. My husband was a pastor on staff at a church and we just kind of felt like we were square pegs and round holes. We really feel like God's called us to ministry. We feel like that's like what makes our heart beat. But where we found ourselves was square peg and round hole. And so I said I would never do anything like this. But the problem was that I followed a total stranger on Instagram. And for the first year, I'd love for you to drop in the chat. How long did it take for you to actually say yes? Some of you, it might be a day. Some of you, it might be like me, 18 months. Okay. Um, but long story short, I followed this girl for 18 months and the first 12, I did nothing but make fun of her. I thought she was in a scam. I swore that she was robbing people. She just can't stop picking. Okay. Like I just could not stop looking at her stuff. And I will never forget the moment when I walked into, um, my store, I was getting ready to do the schedule for the following week. And like, you know, other people I was avoiding doing my work. And I walked into a cold office, sat at a cold desk and I pulled out my phone. And the first thing that popped up, I opened up Instagram. And the first thing that popped up was her newsfeed and something in me shifted in that moment. And uh, for the next six months, I just vicariously lived through her. I realized that in one year, her entire life had changed and mine hadn't. She said, yes, she bought the house on the lake. She bought a car cash. She was able to say yes to her daughter and travel. And I was at the same job, same car, same pay, same rental house, same everything. And it was in that moment I realized what if she had something that I needed. And it still took another six months for me to say yes. Um, but I jumped in on May 24th, 2016, scared out of my mind. I had what I deem as a holy crap moment where you're just like, you're like, holy crap, what did I do? What, you know, like, did you sell your soul to the devil? Did you buy an elephant? I don't know why. It's so scary to make like good decisions in our life, but it's not scary at all to make the bad ones, right? 
And so I jumped in scared out of my mind. I've never done anything like this before, but I really had one thing that I wanted and that was freedom. And I wanted someone to stop controlling my time. That's all I wanted. I wanted to be able to spend unlimited time with my kiddos. I was tired of getting the text messages when my husband was off on the weekend. And I, I knew what I got signed up for as a retail manager, nights, weekends, holidays. I knew that, but I was still tired of working 50 to 60 hours a week, only being compensated for 40. And I am here to tell you the only pyramid scheme I have ever been a part of is the one that corporate America has, um, you know, where you are working, 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 and you get a 10 cent raise, you get a 25 cent raise. It is ridiculous. And so I jumped in, didn't know what I wanted, but at the time it was 2016, the company was giving away a free cruise. And I watched my enroller get on the cruise the year before because I was stalking her during that time. And so I'm like 60% red, you know, 20 or 30% blue. And for some reason, I'm very driven by my blue. I've realized that even now I'm driven by being left out. I'm driven by uh, not being included. I'm driven by, you know, competition and contest and, all the warm, fuzzy feelings. So I watched my enroller get on this cruise the year before. And I was like, you know what? I'm not driven by money, which is so weird. But I was like, I want to get on that cruise. And we've never been able to go on a cruise. And we always wanted to go on one. And so that really drove me to go Ruby in two months. Because I was like, what do I need to do to get on the cruise? And my enroller said, if you go Ruby, you'll basically guarantee your spot. And so I didn't know what I was doing. I was really that ignorance on fire. But I will tell you, I was ignorance on fire, but I wasn't. I did every single thing my enroller told me. I, I was staying up till 2 a.m. I live in Florida, staying up till 2 a.m. so I could catch California people, potentials, customers. I did the most, okay? And I gave so much effort with very little in return because we all know those first few ranks, you're not really being, it's not like, you know, unless you're climbing the ranks or you're enrolling a lot of distributors, which I wasn't, you're just making a couple hundred dollars. And so I was working so much more than the money I was making, but it was worth it because I knew I had a long-term vision. If she, my enroller said, give me a year to change your life. And I trusted her because I saw her, I saw her commitment. I saw her dedication. I didn't trust me. I've been a quitter my whole life. And so whatever my enroller said to do, I am telling you, I did it. I showed up when I didn't want to. I did the whole thing. I was begging her. You guys, I will never forget. She probably had about three or 4,000 people on her team. And I was blowing her phone up. No, you are going to teach me how to enroll distributors because I was six weeks in and I had only signed my husband at that point. And I needed to go Ruby. And back then it wasn't three, it was five people you needed. And I was blowing up her phone to the point where she said, do you want to be in my leadership group? She saw something in me. She saw my hunger. And you guys, I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter whether you know it all or you don't, your hunger is something that no one can give you. You have to give that to yourself. And so I got Ruby and then I sat there for nine or 10 months because or seven or eight months because I didn't know what I wanted after that. I got exactly what I wanted. And so I think a lot of people see my journey now. And maybe if you've been around for a minute, you've heard of my name over the last 18 months, but you don't realize how much I struggled the first 18 months. I mean, I, Ruby is the longest rank I have ever sat at. And it's because I tied and I died. I got exactly what I wanted and I stopped going after more. I thought, oh, it's this easy. It's just going to fall up or fall all together naturally. And it doesn't work that way. You have to keep working. You are not a manager that can just go kick your feet up on your desk. And on payday, you're going to get paid the same amount. If you want your in check or your paycheck to grow, you have to consistently show up, consistently cast that vision. And Ruby is the rank that I realized and no one's doing this for me. That if I wanted this, I had to figure it out. And I'm here to tell you guys tonight, there is a level in this business that like, it would be so nice for someone to give you the perfect words, the perfect post, the perfect scripts, the perfect live ideas, the perfect training. There's a level, there's a piece of the puzzle. There's a level of this that's called you that no one can give you and you have to figure you out. And I went through this terrible pain <laughs> at Ruby, but I showed up to my first conference and um, I went from Ruby to Double Diamond in five months. I was steamrolling and it was this beautiful thing. It was this beautiful transformation process, except at the end of Double Diamond, my team was leaving me. 
And it was because I crossed the finish line, but I was unintentionally bulldozing over my team. And that moment is what led me to the color personality. If you've ever heard, I love talking about the color personality. I consider myself an expert. It has absolutely changed my life. Mm -hmm. And um, so in August of 2017, I decided I was no longer, I was a new double diamond and I decided I was no longer going to promote until my team was ready. I was going to learn how to put their needs first, how to truly step into that leadership role and start caring about my team and it's kind of like a game of leapfrog like you promote and then you help other people promote and then you promote again and um, I needed to build some rubies I needed to build some executives I needed to stop bulldozing over my team and start duplicating and so I sat back and we gained massive momentum and because of that decision and we started paying off debt a lot of people started to hear my name in 2018 because we not only went 100% debt free but I literally went from double and then I went triple prez ambassador and diamond 2.0 all in a matter of like 15 months it happened. Mm -hmm. And, um, it was really this beautiful thing. I by no means can take credit for it. I mean, I have a phenomenal tribe. I have phenomenal leaders who make me a better leader. Um, they, t oh my gosh, my team tolerates the crap out of me because I know I'm a hot mess. Um, but I'm telling you, I, I made their, you know, there was a few moments in my journey that I have made these intentional decisions and they changed the trajectory of my business and my life. And so, you know, um, I reached the top of the company and I got another account and I started all over. And so I went diamond in 90 days cause I didn't do that the first time. And I thought, well, I'm going to challenge myself and do it this time. So I did. And then I sat there until last month, last month, I, uh, took my third account beyond my husband. Uh, double diamond, which was really exciting. And so um, we're in a position now that, um, you know, we're growing and I'm excited, but I hope that you by no means put me on a pedestal, you guys there. I have, I have people that join me and quit. I have people that leave, um, you know, our tribe. I have people that it's not for them. I have bad days. I'm walking through a lot of life right now. I just realized, um, uh, just over a month ago, I went and uh, went to the doctor and got some checkups and realized I have a hormonal imbalance. And so I'm currently walking through something where I've just been operating the last few months, not as myself. And we weren't really able to understand that, um, understand what was going on. And now we have a bigger bird's eye view. So I'm, I'm seeing doctors, I'm on some supplements, I'm getting things right, but I'm having a lot of dark days right now. And you know, a lot of days where it's just I'm sad and I'm crying a lot, but guess what? I'm making my business happen through all of that. And so I don't say that to, to brag or to boast because like, I mean, I could I'll probably, I'm probably going to cry right now, but like today's not a good day for me. And like, that's why I look the way that I look right now, because like, I didn't want to get ready today. And so I hope that you can like have me be vulnerable tonight. I want to be real with you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but through it all, I have to show up because I am always a wife, I am always a mom, and I'm always a business owner. And I have an obligation to show up for my tribe. I have an obligation to lead from the front. I enrolled a customer today and a distributor. And I did it from my office. I didn't wanna get out of bed today, you guys. Like, I'm just walking through a dark time and praise God, like, he knows what it is and I, and I know what it is and I know why it's happening and it's going to bring me closer to Jesus. And I'm gonna talk about Jesus. I apologize if you don't believe, but my husband's ordained. I believe in Jesus Christ. So I'm gonna talk about Jesus, but I'm on a journey that I've spent so much time developing myself and we've spent so many years out of ministry that I haven't worked on my relationship with Jesus in a few years. And so um, I'm on this amazing journey right now, but I want you to know that no matter what happens in your life, you can still rock your business, you can still promote, and you can still find freedom. So sorry, that was probably a lot longer than you expected, Noel, but that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, it was perfect. And thank you so much for showing up for us. I know that you have to show up for your team, but you didn't have to show up for us. So we really, really appreciate you. And we appreciate your vulnerability 100%. So um, yeah, so what do you say to people? I like, you know you talked about how like you you work so hard in the beginning and you're not compensated for for your efforts in the beginning. So how do you explain that to new distributors or how do you explain that to people who have been with you for six months and they're still not seeing the paychecks? Yeah, well, I think at some point I am like 60% red. So I think at some point you do have to start peeling back the layers of the onion. And you're always gonna have those people that don't wanna go all in and that's fine. You will, I mean, 
I mean, drop a two if you've ever made an excuse for a reason not to work your business. Can I like hold up all the twos? Like no one is exempt from that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we do often turn our why into our excuse. And I know that's really cliche, but you have the person who starts and says, I need this. I'm a sing, and I'm not making fun of anyone. I could, I could talk about it for any any walk of life, right? But the the mom who says, I'm a single mom, I need this. And then they use that on the back end. Well, I'm a single mom. I need to focus on my kids, but that's why you joined, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it's, it, we could say that about anything. And, um, and uh, so I think at some point we have to have an honest conversation with ourselves. And I'm just, I guess my red is not afraid to do that. I kind of feel like I'm doing a disservice to people if I don't have that honest conversation. Mm -hmm. Obviously the way that you deliver anything always has to be in love and tact and grace. I'm not always the best at that. Um, I mean, if you're like down and out and you need a friend to come wrap their arm around you, don't call me. Like, I'm not going to put my arm around you. I'm going to be like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, you need to get up and stop being a baby, <laughs> you know? But I'm that friend in the road when you're like, Ashley, I don't know whether to go left or right. I'm going to be like, oh, go left because this, this, and this. And I have really strong intuition. So for someone who's struggling or been in the same spot for a really long time, you got to start peeling back the layers of the onion. And that's where I was when I went Ruby. I stopped getting inspired. I went Ruby and I call it, you tie and you die. So we have this goal. I want to make a thousand dollars a month. And so our goal is here and our work ethic. Dip, 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 and we're excited. If you, it's, has anybody ever played um, paper, rock, scissor, but I don't know if y'all like, I didn't grow up in the church. Okay. Jesus came and found me. He saved me. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, but we played gorilla man and gun. And it was gorilla man and gun. If you tie, you die. So that's kind of like, cause you know, youth groups were big. That's how they like eliminate people. And so I've kind of adopted that same philosophy. If you tie, you die. If you reach exactly what you want, it is game over for you because success takes people out. It really does. And I think that we put our hopes and our expectations on the wrong thing. How many of us have ever said, oh, I've got a customer signing Friday. And so we wait Tuesday, we wait Wednesday, we wait Thursday. We're like, oh, I got them. Oh no, they're guaranteed. We, we tell ourselves these lies, right? And I'm here to tell you until you have it, you don't have it. I can't tell you how many people have given me their card number three days early, given me their social security number the night before, run it in the morning. And I'll wake up to a text. They text me at 2 a.m. Don't run it. My, you know, something, I had an emergency come up or they chicken out, you know, until you have it, you don't have it. So I think we do a lot of things to make excuses or like set ourselves up for failure. And so if we start peeling back the layers of that onion and start really digging, why is my check not increasing? Why am I not seeing growth to my organization or to what I'm doing? there's usually something controllable that we have. Maybe it's a belief system. Maybe it's how we're talking. Um, you can be thinking all the positive thoughts and doing the right words. But if you're like, I suck at signing distributors. Oh, this is so hard. You're hurting yourself. You could be saying all the fluffy freaking affirmations that you want to post all over your house and taking all the right action. But if you in your mind don't believe it's possible, it's not happening. Just like you can have, you know, all the pie in the sky thoughts. I'm going to be an ambassador overnight. <laughs> okay. And you can call yourself an ambassador diamond all you want. But if you're not taking the action, it's never going to happen. And so sometimes I find that people who aren't moving forward, at some point you're out of alignment. There's something out of alignment, whether it's your thoughts, your words, or your actions. And it just takes some honest truth, some extreme ownership and some digging to find that out and some people are willing to look in the mirror and have the honest conversation and some people aren't. And so you got to ask yourself, are you willing to look in the mirror when something's going wrong? It's never external. It's always internal. And so you just got to be willing to look in the mirror and get to work. That's so good. Okay. So kind of along those same lines, I want to talk to you about how you, how you train your distributors, how you train your personally enrolled. Um, and one of my diamonds actually asked, how do you, how do you deal with people who just completely blow off what you're saying and trying to go do their own thing and still do that in a tactful manner? 
Yeah. So I think that um, one thing I'm big on is the color of personality. And the reason being is because I think it's important that I am effective to do what God's called me to do, which is to, I'm very direct. I'm very candid and um, I'm a visionary and I am passionate about leadership. I find, I feel, I honestly feel leadership is one of my God given gifts. And so for me to do my job, I have to understand the other person. Um, I don't know how well you guys understand the color personality, but for someone that's a yellow blue, who's a little bit more soft, they love people, they love fairness and everything is rainbows and butterflies. I'm going to probably have a different approach with someone who is a green red, who is very direct, bullheaded, lacks patience, mm -hmm. you know? And so understanding the other person I think is key because if you want to help them see, you've got to speak their language. There are, um, I read a great book and it gave some really powerful insight that um, uh, influence and manipulation are the same tactics. Mm -hmm. The difference is, is the outcome and the intent behind them. So the same way I'm going to influence someone is the same way I can manipulate them, but there's a difference between pulling and pushing. I want to pull people towards me. I don't want to push them to where I want them to go. That's manipulation. That's I'm in it for myself. That's what took me to double diamond unintentionally, unintentionally. I manipulated people. I forced people to get where I needed them to go. So I could get to where I needed them to go. That's manipulation. And I knew that I couldn't, that's not sustaining leadership. So if I have to deliver a message to someone, um, you know, that's, being stubborn, like I need to know their color personality. If they're a red or a yellow, they're probably pretty stubborn. And a lot of what I do when I launch people is I do make sure, especially with my personal roles, I get on Zoom with them for 15 or 20 minutes and I'm asking them what their goals are. I'm asking them what they want out of this. I'm going over the color personality results. And in that, I'm very uh, quick to tell them if they're a yellow or red, like, oh, you stubborn, you stubborn, okay? And I usually make them laugh, but I'm like, hey, I'm stubborn too. And stubbornness is a fantastic um, strength. I think we talk about stubbornness in a negative you know, context. It's actually very, it's, it's an amazing strength, but you have to be so stubborn about what you want so stubborn about the goal that you're flexible on the method. And I try to remind people of that over and over and over. And so whenever they're responding to people without sending me a screenshot or they're bypassing our systems or they're being proactive, I never want to denounce what they're doing. I never want to tell someone they can't move until I give them permission because I'm not their boss. So I'm, I always, you know, Hey, I love that you're super proactive and I love that you want to hit the ground running. But one thing that I know, and I, I don't try to pull my weight on them. Like, well, I'm an ambassador diamond and I'm number 25 and you should listen to me. But what I do say is like, Hey, what I do know is I've built my business like 99.8% on social media with like 95% strangers. And I make multiple six figures a year. I like to think I know what I'm doing and I, you know, I think that it's going to be better for you if you trust me and like, let me help you figure out why we do what we do. Cause there's a method to the madness. And so I think constantly reminding them of the birds I view. And then I have people who still will not listen to me after I've sent them voice memos, explained why zoomed with them flat out, told them they were freaking stubborn and I needed them to stop. And they're still going to do their thing. And then I say, okay, enjoy. Let me know when you need help because I do not want to invest my time into someone that's not coachable. I just don't. And it's going to be so much faster if we work together. And I do not want to babysit someone all day, every day. I've got way too much on my hands and I have too many people that would love for me to do like explicit, intense one-on-one -on -one training with them. And so if you want to be stubborn and recreate the wheel, go do your thing, but I'm not going to honor that behavior in my tribe. And, um, you know, uh, I'm not going to approve your posts. I'm not going to recognize you because I will not honor the wrong behavior. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a, uh, we've got a mission on our tribe and we've got systems and you can color outside the lines all you want, but our systems work and I'm not going to bend for one person who thinks they know what they're doing. So um, obviously deliver it in love intact. And then if you've done it, you know, five, six, seven, eight times, Hey, sometimes you got to move on. And I think some people need that. I think we're afraid to move on without people. Now I'm telling you this as someone who I have no problem enrolling distributors. My, I aim for nine new distributors a month. That's my number. That's all I want. And, um, so I, 
it's easy for me to sit back and say this. If you're a brand new distributor and you only have one distributor, I know the pressure of you don't want to lose that only person that you've got. So I understand that. That didn't flip for me until I was about a diamond. I started kind of getting some stank on myself and I was like, oh, I'm going to talk to y'all how I want to talk to y'all. And uh, that bit me in the butt a little bit. Um, but what I will say is that I truly do believe that sometimes you need to ruffle people's feathers and you need to let people know the ship will move on without them. And I've had to do that even to some of my higher level leaders, like, Hey, I love you, but I, I will not wait for you. Cause you don't like, I'll do this without you. And guess what? I've done it without them. And guess what? They're like, Hey, <laughs> I want to, I want to do it your way. Your way was more fun, <laughs> you know, and it's not that my way is the right way, but I truly believe that I have a gift for what I do. And so, um, so that's what I would say. That's kind of how I would handle that. You're always going to have those people and Hey, do it your own way. It, my way isn't for everybody. And so if you find a way that's working for you, awesome. But what I find is it's more people just wanting to be obstinate, obstinate, obstinate. I don't know how to say that word. Um, and just wanting to push back, you know? So mm -hmm. I don't know. So, okay. So nine's my number two for distributors. Not that I always sign nine distributors a month, but that's my comfort level. I would like to sign as many as nine. And for me personally, I found that 10 is too much. That's just me. Some, mm -hmm. some people can do a lot more. Some people can do a lot less, but for you, like what are like thinking about nine? Cause that's, that's me as well. I'm thinking that I'm probably going to lose about three to four of those nine. Absolutely. So what would you say like to a new distributor coming in and expecting, like you said, to hold on to that one? What are, what, what's, what's the typical like retention rate as far as distributors are concerned? Oh, I mean, I feel like they, so I kind of always go back. I earned a conference that Dr. Nassif spot. I worked really, really hard for that crap too. And so just like perspective, I talked to over, I had a TikTok that blew up a couple days before Dr. Nassif was even announced. And so when it was announced, I like looked at Jason, I was like, I'm going to earn that. Like it's get, like, I'm going to get that. And I just focused on talking to people all week long. I had over 300 conversations. I signed 11 distributors. Um, one of them canceled the week of, I was so pissed. So I was like, if this cancel hurts me, I'm gonna be pissed, but I still got it out of those 10. I had um, three of them that never showed up to anything, never got, never, uh, I launched all of them, but except one, the other two, um, plugged in, never did anything. I had, uh, three of them that kind of moseyed, like they enrolled a couple people, but they were real spotty. And then I had four of them that kind of hit the ground running and that are still with me right now. So, um, you're always going to have those kind of, you know, those kind of results. Um, and hopefully just one of them sticks. One of them, it's about making sure you're giving them all they need. You're casting that vision, um, of those four. I mean, some of them might not be here in 90 days. I don't know. You know, my goal is that they are, but you know, we all know that sometimes it doesn't happen that way. So that's so good to hear because I think that so often we think, Oh, like these top earners, they do something that we don't do. Heck no. I had someone like two months ago join me and block me. And I'm like, you're dumb. <laughs> she blocked me the next day. First of all, you waste. And she joined with like 60 BV. So I was like, baby, like you real dumb because you just wasted money. Like it made no sense whatsoever. And she never returned her kit. Like she kept it all. And I'm just like, I'm pretty sure her $20 e-suite fee is still running, but she blocked me. And I was just like, I mean, I get people are scared, but, but no people, people probably quit on Stephanie Dunn. And you're like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, you know, but I don't know, people, people get scared and it's fine. And some people are only meant to take you so far and that's fine too. Some, maybe some of these people who joined her in Dr. Nassif, God allowed our paths to cross just for me to earn Dr. Nassif. You know what I mean? And that was the only purpose they served. So when you just focus on what you have control over, just like you said, the nine DTs, that's all I have control over is how many conversations I have so I can reach my personal goal. Mm -hmm. People will stick, but you're, listen, there's nothing that us top leaders, if there's like a magical book somewhere, I got left out. <laughs> I got left out of that book. <laughs> so what do you think's working? Like, not what do you think? What is working for your team to duplicate for them to enroll? Either, I know you do mostly social media. So if you do anything offline, tell us about that. But what, do you, what are you doing now that's working for you guys? 
So um, I hate all things offline, if I could just be very transparent. Um, so it, which is really funny because people are like, really? Like, you know, you're so crazy online. And I'm just like, and when you meet me face to face, I'm like awkward turtle. And I'm like, hey, hi, are you judging me? Um, my blue kicks in like in a really bad way. So um, I love social media. I just have fallen in love with the camera. I am most comfortable in front of a camera. Um, I think that video is key to any successful business. I think if you're not using video in some capacity, I think you are missing out 1000%. I think you are not running a business on social media. If you don't use video, I don't do Facebook every single day. I've had a hard time, especially now, just the season that I'm walking through. Um, I've had a really hard time getting in front of the camera. So when I do like, I'm really forcing it. Um, but I try to make sure that I'm on my stories every day, at least showing motion on my, I love, um, Facebook. I love Instagram stories. And then I really do enjoy TikTok. But again, some of these things I'm having to really force myself to do now because I know that my consistency and me showing up matters for my team. But I think it's just using everything that social media has. I think it's so important that you find your groove and not that you're giving a little bit to everything. I think so many people try to overwhelm themselves and give a little bit. Oh, I'm going to do, you know, you post once a week on Facebook and then you're like, well, I, I got to go learn TikTok. Like, no, stick to one platform and figure it out mm -hmm. and um, find your lane. You know, if you're used, if you're someone who doesn't like social media and you prefer face to face, but you can't do that right now with quarantine, I think that's really important that you find ways that you can implement. Maybe when you get a potential, you ask for their phone number and you get them on the phone. Um, maybe you send voice memos because you know you're more power, powerful through voice. Mm -hmm. And so that those are ways that I've had to find. Um, when I get people from TikTok, I get them to my Instagram because I'm more consistent on my stories. Because I can, I mean, sometimes my stories look like a centipede, okay? I'm like always in my stories. And I know it's so annoying, but I don't care. I'm my biggest fan. And I know they're going to be exposed to me more on Instagram. But on Instagram, they're also not going to see, um, you know, a lot of my Facebook lives and my personality. And so I have to be in my stories. But then I started sending voice memos because I was like, you know what? my voice, my energy, my passion, my excitement, that is what sells. That's why people like my Facebook lives. That's why people like my videos because it's my energy. And so how can I show up in my energy? And that's by doing voice memos um, or doing phone calls or whatever, you know? So um, really just, we're doing all the things social media. Are you guys doing host to post? Oh yeah. Yep. I mean, when I say Facebook, it's like adding to groups, uh, post to post, um, videos, live stories, like it's whatever it takes to get the job done. And I'm not a fan of post to post. I hate, oh, I'd rather eat a hot dog turd than send a message to someone about the product. Ugh. But guess what? I do it because I have to be an example. Um, so I think there's a lot of people, it also depends on personalities. I have some people that want nothing to do with the camera and they'd rather send all the messages in the world and that works for them. And that's really, I mean, not that there's one personality that does better on camera. I'm not saying that, but I do tend to find more of my greens and more of my yellows, like more behind the scenes stuff. And it's my reds and my blues that want to be upfront, bold, let's get on camera, let's just do it, you know? And so, um, but yeah, we're doing all the things. That's awesome. So if you guys have questions for Ashley, post them in the comments. Will you hit on, cause I know we have some brand newbies. Will you just briefly hit on the color personalities? Cause I know you've been talking about that a lot. I believe that is so important when you are building a team, not just, not just in a leader's position, but when you're recruiting even customers, because it changes the way you talk to people. 100%. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Then you guys want a little training on the color personality. Yeah. 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 Yes. No. If you don't hop off, it's fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, hold on. Let me find my little squaresies. And I will basically give you guys like the short version of what I train our new distributors on. Okay. So you have to swipe if you're on a, um, camera or something. Vanessa, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see that? Cause I can see you. You see that, Vanessa? Yeah, thanks. Awesome, thanks, bestie. All right, so um, you can take the color personality test. I don't know, you can Google it, the color personality test, okay? You find it. And um, you are your top two colors out of all four, okay? So for instance, I am a red, blue, yellow, green. I am a red, blue, that's how God made me. And then yellow, your third color, you have to be intentional. I have to really, um, I have to put like wear my yellow hat for it to get worn. 
If I don't put my yellow hat on, it's not going to get worn. Okay. You have to be very intentional. And then that third color, you're usually just not. So I value greens. I value you. I am a military brat. My mom and dad were both Marines growing up. Life sucked. Okay. I value order, structure, systems, all of that. But I am like negative 37% green. I love you guys, but I swear to God, you have to stick up your butt and I can't handle it. Okay. So I said that with all due respect. <laughs> I'm married to a green, so it's fine. And so uh, let's dive in. Reds are typically, if you know your color personality, I want you to drop it in the chat too. So reds are typically goal oriented. Um, we're driven by money, title, status, power. We have an internal fire. I usually say if you're not a red, you want a red in your organization because we could be dying in a car accident with our arms severed off and we're going to pop promotion. For instance, about a month ago, I got an offender bender. A 18 year old girl rear ended me and we had to wait almost two and a half hours hours for the cops to come. Everything was fine. It was like, she was going 20 miles an hour, but the back of my SUV ate her car. Her dad came. I signed him on the spot as a distributor. Okay. <laughs> like I can't, okay. Can't make this stuff up. And, uh, so reds were very, we're very, take the bull by the horns. We're those natural born leaders. Okay. We're also extremely stubborn. We do not like to admit weakness because uh, we like to play our cards close to our chest. If I ask you for help, that's a sign of weakness and we don't like weakness. So a lot of what I'm physically walking through right now, you can imagine that I feel very weak and very, you know, insignificant right now. And it's not true, but that's how I feel. Cause I'm like, ah, I'm crying all the time, <laughs> you know? And, um, but reds, you know, if you get a red in your organization or you're talking to a red or you need a red, a red's going to be that person when you're checking out at Walgreens and they're like, you know, they have their like, pad of paper and they're like yo you want to donate a dollar and you do and they're they check off a tally and they're like yo Rachel I got another one like that's a red okay they are hungry there there's some kind of competition going on the back of the Walgreens store okay and um we, we've all seen a cashier that's done that right they like tally in like how many or they like lean over and they like you know, taking notes. Um, but reds were just driven. We have an internal fire and uh, very self-motivated blues. I'm like 20 or 30% blue. And I swear to God, it's all the bad stuff, but blues were like feeling oriented. We wear our heart on our sleeve. We are sympathetic, empathetic. Um, we love people. We get our energy from people. Okay. Like I'm going to have a hard time going to bed tonight. I'm going to have to take me some NyQuil because I'm going to be like, <laughs> like, how'd it go? And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, like when I'm on Facebook Live, my words are red, my body is blue. There you go, okay? It, like anyone who don't watch my Facebook Live for the first time, you'd be like, oh, she took a line of crack cocaine. No, that's just normal. <laughs> and, uh, but blues, we are the life of the party. We are the wild child. We are reckless, okay? And uh, we're the people that are like, hold my beer. I'm gonna go jump off the roof, okay? We like think later, all right? You are the people who come home from a vacation and it takes you three weeks to unpack. All right. And it takes you like, you know, you're, you start packing and doing laundry 30 minutes before you leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're very lazy by nature. We're last minute. Um, we are driven by FOMO. We're driven by fear of missing out mm -hmm. and, um, we overcommit and under deliver and it's very unfortunate. So, you know, the blue is the Walgreens person when you go in and check it out and you're like, Hey, how's your day going? Like, I just got here. Like, I just want to leave. My friend's having a party tonight. And I'm like, Ugh, I just can't believe I'm at work. Ugh. Okay. They're probably in blue. They don't want to be there. They're not like blues. We don't like work. So my red and my blue work together. And then they work against each other because my red's very driven blue. No, y'all. My ideal day is sleeping 20 hours, playing Mario Kart for three, and then maybe saying hi to my family for an hour. Like that's my ideal day. Okay. Like when you're talking to blue Mayfield. Okay. But blues were a lot of fun. We'll talk to every single human and a cockroach. Yellows are very service oriented. Um, yellows are so sweet and, you know, uh, just meek. And you could tell reds and yellows are opposites. There's a lot of similarities there. They're both very strong workers and they're both very stubborn. Yellows are stubborn. They don't like to ask for help because you're, they're used to being the help right? Is there, am I right or am I right? Okay. And so they like to just figure things out. And so, um, but yellows are nothing like a blue. Okay. Like yellows are honest, reliable, dependable. Their word is their bond. Mm -hmm. And what I find if you're on here and you're a red, you're going to attract the most yellows because, and this is not an insult to yellows, but everything a red is a yellow is not. Um, reds are very direct. We're very commanding. We're very confident. Uh, we're very, we operate with a level of urgency. We're decisive and, um, you know, we've got a lot of, uh, self-confidence. I 
probably said that 15 times. And so yellows tend to, you know, they put everybody else first before them, but yellows have this amazing ability. I, yellows are my favorite color uh, of all the colors and I am not a yellow, so it's very unbiased, but you're, the yellows are chameleon colors. So no matter depending on their environment, they can, they actually know how to be all the colors because yellows are externally driven. Mm -hmm. So where a red is internally driven, a yellow is externally driven. And so, you know, the yellow is going to be the cashier when you go and say hi, and they're going to be like, you know, how's your day going? Oh, you know, my baby is sick and I just wish I could be there with them. Okay. And, uh, or they're going to be like, oh my gosh, like, you know, my kid has a test. I can't wait to go home and help him study. Like they're always talking about someone that's other than themselves. There's always a care concern there. And yellows are powerhouses like in this business. I mean, the fact that we get to make money to help other people, that's like the death, like that's the embodiment of a yellow. A yellow is service oriented. You find value in serving an organization or a person. Yellows don't necessarily like people. Okay. Don't get that mixed up. Reds and blues are people oriented. Yellows and greens are very task oriented. Yellows find satisfaction in the service portion of it. But I know a lot of nurse, nurses that don't like patients and a lot of teachers that don't like students, but you like the act of it. You like knowing that you make a difference. Um, but yeah, yellows are absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. And then last but not least, greens. Greens and blues are polar opposites. So for instance, me and my husband are both red. He swings green, I swing blue. He has his bag packed, you know, two and a half days ahead of time with this detailed schedule of where we're going to Disney World, what time, what ride. And my God, if we show up to the ride two minutes late, he he comes unglued, okay? Me, I'm literally like, I don't know, washing my hair and doing laundry 20 minutes before we leave. And I don't know where we're going when we get in the car, but I'm like, let's go, you know? And so greens are very uh, task oriented people drain you. You believe there are stupid people and they say stupid things. And that's why their life sucks because they're idiots. Greens, you totally understand what I just said. As a blue, I'm always like, oh God, that hurts. But greens, you're like, no, that's exactly true. People are stupid and that's why their life suck. <laughs> and, uh, but greens, like the power of residual income and the power of making money, uh, doing work one time and making money over and over. Sis, you thrive on systems. You're very meticulous, detail oriented. You know, a green is going to be that cashier when you go up to them and you ask how their day is going and they say, good. And a blue is sitting back and being like, oh, this jerk. Oh, they are so nasty. And no, a one word answer is suffice for a green. No. When I get in my group chats and I ask my greens how they're doing and they're like, you're like, how's it going? They're like, okay. And it's funny to watch my leaders because my blue leaders are the ones that message me like, oh my God, I know she's going to quit. She wants to quit. She wants to quit. She hates this. I pissed her off. And I'm like, what'd she say? She said she was good. <laughs> she's a green. Greens are not going to church it up. They're not going to tell you this story. They're not going to be like, oh my God, you're never going to believe this. So I text Betty and Betty wanted Thermo Fight X, but Betty said she was gaining weight and I couldn't understand why. And it's because she took the Fat Fighters at the same time as Thermo Fight X. Oh my God. A green's going to be like, how does someone lose weight? Or Thermofide X makes people lose weight, right? Okay. They're not even going to say thank you. Like they try to use as many few words as possible. Okay. And so, you know, that's a little bit about the colors, but I think when you understand the colors and you understand a little bit about who you are and, you know, why you tick the way you tick, you're going to start to understand other people. So I know when I'm talking to a potential and there, you know, and I say, what's got you interested? And they're like, man, my husband works so hard mm -hmm. and, you know, I miss, or I'm missing moments with my kids or, you know, it makes me so upset that I can't give my kids, you know, take my, take my son to soccer practice. Okay. They're probably a yellow. They're telling you all about someone else. If I'm posting a lot at whenever I go to an event, cause I'm having a lot of fun and I'm in my stories and I've got great energy. I always sign a blue distributor, either a blue or a red, like guaranteed I'm signing a distributor because it's my energy and they see me having fun or they see me winning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Reds want to join someone who's going so somewhere and doing something. So if you want to attract people who are workers, you have to work. You got to twerk it. You got to show them that you know how to lead them. Okay. I started watching my enroller, but that's not who caught my attention first. Who caught my attention was a girl in her downline. 
But guess what? I thought that girl was an idiot. And I'm sorry, I'm not making fun of it, but she was a dominant blue. She's not in the company anymore. So I'll, I, obviously I'll say her dang name. I'm scarred, record this. Um, <laughs> but I thought the girl was an idiot. But me and this girl would not be friends like in real life. And we weren't. Like, I, like she was a dominant blue. She drank all the time. She partied all the time. That is not my lifestyle. And I was like, you're, and she was full of drama. And I'm like, you are your reason. Like, it's you. But I liked what she was doing. And I was like, what is she doing? And so I found the ring. I started following all these girls and I realized they were all on the same team because I told y'all I was watching for 18 months. I knew what I was, I'm investigating, okay? Mm -hmm. And I found the ringleader and I wanted her. I wanted the one who was making the money, who bought the house, the one who was killing it because you buy a million dollar house on the lake in California. Oh, you making some sh money, okay? Mm -hmm. I wanted her. and so you want to attract a red, you got to get a red's attention. You got to find a re cause you know what you can, you can enroll me all day long, but that doesn't mean you're going to keep me if you don't know how to manage me and you don't know how to lead me. So you got to be ready what you ask for. You got to, you know, and sometimes God doesn't give us what we ask for cause we didn't build it. We're not ready. Do you know what you would do if you got a dominant red tomorrow? Do you know how you would respond if you got someone that came in and went Ruby in one week? Do you know how you'd lead them? Do you know what you'd say to them? It's somewhere between knowing exactly how to lead them and shutting up and getting out of their way, right? And so, but you have to be ready for these things. And so when I'm talking to a potential that wants to ask me seven bullet points, I know they're green. Hey, before I, uh, before I uh, join, I just wanna know, you know, what was the temperature of the soil whenever it was harvested? And you know, they always ask you like, and there's like seven and a half questions. I don't know how there's a half in there, but somehow there's a half in there. And I know if it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm like, oh, sweet Jesus. I already know there's a green in there, right? And then if it's people that just wanna have fun, I'm gonna reciprocate. So I'm a blue, I am not a green, like negative 37% green. But if I have a green, I'm gonna talk like a green. I'm gonna say, let me shoot you a voice memo. And I'm gonna speak very, I'm not gonna tell a story. I'm not gonna elaborate. I'm gonna be like, how much is it to join? It's $99. Question number two, what do we do once you join? I, once you get in my system, I'll add you to my team page, tag you in the training video. We'll work together one-on-one. -on -one. Question three, I'm giving them to them fact and direct. A blue, if a blue message is gonna be like, hey girl, you having so much fun. I'm gonna be like, hey girl, hey, with like 15 exclamation points because that's what makes a blue happy. I'm gonna try to reciprocate that. So um, that was a really long answer, like all my answers are, I apologize. But uh, I just think it's important that whether you use the color personality or something else that you understand other people because effective communication isn't just what you say and how you say it, it's how it's received. And it's important that you're speaking and communicating in multiple different ways. That way you're touching multiple different people. So good. We could just hang out with you all night. I feel like we, I feel like we got you back in your happy place. <laughs> I know I will be. See, and you want to know what's funny about that is uh, sometimes when you go in a bad place, it's because all you're doing is thinking about yourself. Mm. Right. And so um, that's a lot. I have a life coach right now. And so um, she reminded me of that last week. I actually have a really big opportunity that I'm scared to step out. I swear, anytime I say that, people are like, Are you leaving the company? I'm not leaving the company. Okay. But I have an opportunity to, me and my husband, to build a platform that's more aligned with what God's called us to do. And so we have opportunity. And I'm scared out of Ashley Mayfield is scared out of her mind. And I want nothing more than to pull back on it. And uh, my life coach was like, You are so in your head because you are being so selfish right now. And I was like, A heffa, please excuse me. And she was like, and listen, if you don't have a life coach or some, a mentor that speaks to you that way, you're doing it wrong, okay? You need someone in your life that will smack your butt and that will slap you back into reality. And she was like, you are being so selfish right now because all you can do is think about you, poor Ashley, poor Ashley's feelings, poor Ashley being scared, stepping out, getting uncomfortable, trying something new. Oh, you haven't tried something new in three and a half years. Poor you. And you're not thinking about all the people that you're going to impact. You're not thinking about what they need to hear. You're too busy thinking about you and how you're going to sound and how you might stutter on camera. And I was like, oh, well then. <laughs> and so, and that's it. And so that's why, like, that's why I couldn't cancel tonight because I knew that I was going to think about you guys more than myself. And like, by the end of it, I'm going to be fine. Like, I'm not crying. No, I'm not good. So, but 
you know, sometimes we do that. We start thinking only about ourselves instead of all the people and the lives we're going to impact. And it's easy to think that right now, especially with the coronavirus, like, oh my God, I am being so rude. Me, me, me. How am I going to look? What are they going to think about me? You guys, this has nothing to do with you. This has nothing to do with you. You are doing a disservice to your network. If you don't get out and share that we have a business that legit transforms people's lives, that we have a product that people need, want, and desire, mm -hmm. and that they can't find on a shelf. Immune boosting products, yeah, there are people in our country that are depleted of that in their grocery store, or they can't go get them. And so I think when we step out of our own head and we truly think about the impact um, that we can make as humans in other people's lives, I think it's so profound. And yes, even I get in my own head sometimes, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking some time out of your night to pour into us. This is amazing. It's amazing. You are so welcome. Anytime, you guys. Listen, go all out. Don't sleep on this moment. I think this moment is huge. It. This is going to this is going to be where new Stephanie and Joel Dunn's get, you know, raise up and people's lives get changed. And you can either make an excuse or you can do it. There's really, I mean, I see the world in black and white. There's really no gray. You're either taking a step forward or you're taking a step backward. There's no sitting in neutral. And so uh, make sure every day you show up and you take a step. You don't need to leap. You don't need to run. You don't need to spread. Just take a step. If that's all you have in you today, all I had was to take a step today. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I just took one step. And I move forward in my business. Uh, I'm making a difference. And, you know, I was able to help train some people in my downline. And that was a step for me. It's not a normal workload, but for today it was enough. And so every day just show up and do your best. And then the next day I'm going to do, you know, tomorrow I'll wake up and do a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So I promise you guys, you can do this. There is nothing greater on the inside of me that's not on the inside of you. Thank you so much. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks guys. Bye. -bye. Bye.